Hello and welcome to the English Lesson Cafe podcast, where you can listen in on our conversations to improve your English. My name is Mark and I'm here with my wife. My name is Hillary. We are back again with more of our daily life conversations to help you learn as you listen. Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you for stopping by. Whether you're listening or watching the video, my name is Mark and I am flying solo today, so I am by myself. Today I want to encourage you maybe pass along some tips and ideas on learning English. Everybody is at different levels, so this will affect people in different ways. But I think it's all very good information that that will be helpful to you in your journey. Learning English as a second language looks like a difficult task. It seems like something that is beyond reach for some um maybe something that is difficult but doable for others. What I want to share with you today is make up your mind to make it a priority. If you're wanting to learn, if you're really interested, make it a priority. So that means make sure that you set aside this time, whatever time that may be, to learn whether you're listening to something whether you're watching something whatever your resources are or if it's a class make up your mind to make it a priority we have things that are maybe larger priorities than learning a language but for some people when it comes to the idea that they're learning english for their work or to advance themselves in their business it's a it's a big priority some people are learning for educational purposes schooling Now, that's a priority. So one person's priority will be higher than somebody else's, but whatever level you're at, at whatever level you want to learn, make it a priority. Know that I've got this set time that I want to dedicate to learning English and go for it. Relax. Speak slowly. Embarrassingly slow sometimes. I know. I do it when I teach. If I'm teaching a student that is a new learner, maybe a low-level learner, whether it's a child or an adult, it doesn't matter. I will make myself relax. I will speak slowly and very intently. I will do this myself. I will relax and I will really slow my speaking down, my speech down in order for the student to track along with my speaking. I want the student to be able to understand everything I say and how I say it how i pronounce it so yes even for me it becomes almost embarrassingly slow because i do not speak this slowly in everyday conversation with other english speakers now that's a pretty dramatic slowdown of my speech but that's for that's for lower level learners beginners and it really does help it helps them to not feel overwhelmed with trying to grab every bit of vocabulary out of the air and know what i'm saying it allows them to not have to try to pick everything out of the air so fast and to digest what i'm saying in their mind and so as the level improves my speech will become quicker it i try not to speak i don't typically speak fast as fast as some people but um i try to make it as understandable for each student at their level so even when you're speaking back when when you're having conversation with a teacher just relax breathe there's no rush it's not a race when i'm trying to learn a new language 
when I have tried to learn language languages in the past, and even with my students, when I want to learn a phrase in their native language, I have to catch myself because I just want to say it. I want to say it like a native speaker of whether, whether it's Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Japanese, Arabic, whatever it may be. I tend to speak more quickly than I need to because I want to sound native. I want to sound just like they do. And I can't because I need to make the vocabulary get from my brain to my mouth or my speech. And so by slowing down, it allows those, it allows those to work together like they should. Discipline. Discipline is very important. Stick with it. Don't make your goals bigger than your ability to reach those goals. You may in your mind say, I'm going to practice five days a week. I'm going to practice for an hour, Monday through Friday, and I know I can do it. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And then life happens. You have to stay at work later than you normally would. You get home from school and you have more things to do when you get home than you thought you might. Circumstances happen. You have to go somewhere. You have to go visit somebody. Something is really always, something is going to always happen that causes you to not reach that goal. So if you think, I want to do this for five days a week, really think about it. Can you devote five days a week at an hour, a half an hour, whatever time frame you're thinking of? Can you really devote that much time? What do you do? I would say, okay, in my mind, I want to do five days. What's reality? Reality would be maybe three, maybe two. I, I can guarantee you will get more out of learning English if you shrink that time frame down to make it more doable, more attainable. Say two days. Okay, I want to do two days. My goal was five. Forget that. It's probably not going to happen. And if I if I say I'm I want to do five days, and I get two days in, I'm happy. I'm stoked. I'm I'm like yes, this is going well. Let's say Wednesday rolls around. Oh no, I had a flat tire coming home from work. I had car trouble. I had trouble at the house. My internet was out, and that's how I that's how I learn. Anything can happen, and then you get derailed. Ah, uh, Wednesday. Ah, well, I'll get it Thursday. And then Thursday happens. Something else comes up. This happens all the time, and it's understandable. It's not a problem. It's just, do you have free time, let's say, in the bank? In the bank of time, do you have, do you have enough time to say, okay, I missed Wednesday. Thursday, I've got two extra hours, so I can grab some of that time from the bank, and I'm good to go. Or do you not have that extra time, so whatever time you thought about is you can get it back? Um, and I know it may seem simplistic, but I think by choosing a good amount of time that you know that you can you can actually take advantage of, do that. If you can up the time, great. If let's say you have, let's say all you can get is one half hour lesson with a teacher, a tutor in the week. So that half hour, um, if you can improve that, if you can add to that, if you can increase that amount of time, that's even better, but you don't want to be disappointed in what seems like a failed endeavor, which seems like failure sometimes because Life happens are supposed to have. Um, I do this for myself. Sometimes I make these goals bigger than what I can actually do, and then I get disappointed if they don't work out. Now I know we want to aim high. We want to we want to be the greatest in the shortest amount of time. I get that, but let's face reality: you're wanting to learn English as a second language for work for education. You make it work for you. Um, you'll always have time maybe that you can, you can add to it, 
Maybe you can increase your time later. Great. But make the most of whatever time you know that you can actually devote to learning. And that's discipline. It's a matter of discipline. It's difficult. I know. Life throws you um, speed. You have speed bumps in life. Slow you down. There's detours that veer you off track or derail you. But you can do it. You really can. I I experience this every week with my students and I'm really flexible. So, and if, look, if you're wanting a lesson, <laughs> if you're wanting a lesson, you know, call me, uh, send me an email, but I try to be as flexible for my students as I can, because I know that something comes up on the, to school on the way back home. And so, um, don't let it derail you. Keep going, keep going, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. What is your strength? Speaking and listening are a priority when starting out. So, people want to learn English. You have maybe a desk full of books. You have the tools and resources on the internet. But speaking and listening, if you're wanting to, to really speak like a native, and improve your skills, immersion is the best, is very important. If you have a tutor, if you have someone you speak with, a native English speaker, the conversation that you can have done properly, you will increase in your capabilities um, exponentially. Obviously, textbooks are important. Learning grammar is important. Vocabulary is important, which you get during the, you get all this during the conversation. If I try to tell people, um, when you were a child, wherever you grew up, your native language, you grew up as a child, unable to speak, unable to comprehend what others were saying. And yet by a very young age, you were communicating with your parents with your siblings, with friends and family. This, this is what I think is, this is the same way we can learn as adults another language. When you were a child, you were thirsty. Your mother, your father would talk to you. You were hungry. Your mother, your father would talk to you. They would, they would show you things like a ball or a toy, a bottle, a plate, food. And over time, you were listening to this, you were starting to understand and associate, and then you started to speak. I doubt your parents sat down with a book at the age of six months, one year, a year and a half, two years old, and had grammar class with you, had vocabulary, you participate in a spelling bee. Um communication, conversation. And this is how, this is how we learn how to speak in our own native language, whatever that may be. So when I have classes with my students can go over specific grammar at times. Um, but let's face it, most of the class is everyday conversation that you're wanting to participate with your colleagues, with your, um, fellow students with your friends, with your family, when you're traveling abroad. And um, this, is, this is very important. And this is why immersion is great. It's why it's important. It's why it's beneficial. The amount of vocabulary that you can use while you're learning from your teacher, a good, a good tutor, a good teacher. Take notes. As you're speaking back and forth, if, if you're on, if you're on the computer, which this is how I do my classes, I type out the vocabulary sometimes as I'm speaking or a phrase or a correction, the grammar, but it's conversation and, uh, it, it works really well. Um, do you have friends that speak English? Um, if you do on top of or along with having classes with a, with a tutor, 
or learning online, however you may learn, say, okay, I want to designate a time frame during the week to sit down with this native English speaker or with, with a family member that speaks really good English, even if they're not native. Have conversation. Say, look, mom, dad, son, daughter, brother, sister, whoever it may be, look, let's take the hour of four o'clock and let's spend 30 minutes of speaking nothing but English. And if you want to write out conversations beforehand, if you want to memorize those, if you just want to read them back and forth to each other, get comfortable, get comfortable in a conversation mode, get comfortable in a, in a setting where you're asking questions, even if you know the answers, even if they're basic, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Especially if it's with a native speaker or, a, or somebody that speaks very well. You can listen to them. They can listen to you. Maybe they can help you improve along the way with your accent, with your grammar, if, if they're that far along, if they're that advanced. But take the time, say, okay, say dad and sister, they do not speak English, but mom does. So maybe I'll spend 30 minutes with mom and all we'll speak is English. Maybe our native tongue is Japanese or maybe it's Portuguese. We're going to spend 30 minutes, mom and I, only English, to help, to help improve each other or to help improve myself if I'm the one learning. That's a, that's a good plan. I know some people do not have any other family members that do speak English, and that's difficult. They don't even have any colleagues that speak English. Um, so I know that's, that makes it difficult and it's maybe impossible, but if you have that opportunity, take advantage of that because it's, it's huge. Um, and I know too, sometimes I've had students where they say, I'm just embarrassed when I try to speak English, they may live in a country where English is used commonly. So they could go to a restaurant, they could go to a store and maybe the store owner, the restaurant waitress, waiter speaks English. I say, look, talk to them in English, speak just small conversation in English. And I have students that say, man, Mark, I'm, I'm embarrassed because I'm not good at it. And I don't want to look bad in front of them or in front of my friends. Somebody may laugh. That's true. Some, somebody may laugh. They may think that you're silly or they don't understand why you're doing this. Um, it doesn't matter. They're not the ones pursuing this endeavor. They're not the ones wanting to improve themselves in an educational aspect of their life. They're not the ones that are trying to go from here to here in their workspace. Maybe they're wanting to get a promotion. Maybe you're wanting to work for an international community. The person that's sitting there laughing that does not speak the language either. Okay, but. I want to learn it. This is how I learn. Don't worry if people laugh. Hey, look, when I speak a native language back to my student in their native language, I laugh at myself and I'm like, you know what? I know this sounds awful to you. Maybe I'm just really job of this, but I'm going to try it anyway. And, uh, the people that matter don't care. So don't let that stop you. Um, Keep it simple at first. Whatever you're learning, keep it simple. And repetition, repetition, repetition. It may be boring. You may be, speak, you may be speaking into a recorder just so you can hear yourself. Um, keep it simple. Remember, goals that you can actually attain, that you can reach. Don't put something out of reach and you're like, I can't reach it. If somebody put <clears throat> a donut just out of my reach, if I did that, well, I, I would probably lose weight. But if I put a donut out in front of me and I can't reach it, it's just, if I put a donut right here, I'm a happy man. Um, so don't put the goals out too far. Put them within reach. Stretch, that's fine. Conversation is the key 
that will open the doors of fluency. As I said before, conversation with. Enjoy the time together with your tutor. Uh, talk about whatever. I talk about almost anything and everything with my students. Unless, unless they say, I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about this, Mark. For me, life is so huge. There's so much in life that, that goes on in the world, in our environment, in our, in our surroundings, in our city, that the more knowledge you can have, the better you are. It will come in handy because there'll be a vocabulary. Oh, yeah, I can use this when I'm talking to my boss. Ah, yeah, we talked about this the other day in class. I hear this word from my teacher. I hear this word from, you know, my, my boss. I hear this word on TV. It seems simple, but it does help. And so um, be open to talk about pretty much anything. Um, if you're having conversations, and this goes back to what I said before, uh, with speaking with somebody in your family, having conversation with somebody in your family, start with something that's a major part of life, something that's common with everybody. Food, household objects, hobbies, family. Get these basics and secure them. Make these your foundation. Through everybody eats. So I don't care who I speak with around the world. I don't care if it's, if it's in a desert, if the person lives on a mountain, if the person lives at sea, if the person lives, I don't care where they live. Everybody eats and everybody eats something that is similar to the other person. Um, so that's a common, that's a common conversation topic. Family, Every, pretty much everybody has family. So we can, we can familiarize ourselves with mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, and just use these in conversations. And what did I say before? Repetition, repetition, repetition. Hi, mom. How's grandma? She's fine. She said, granddad, how you were doing? We can come up with all kinds of conversations. Um, so, yeah, I know this is basic to most people. Sometimes we just need a little encouragement to help us you know, along the way, to help us maybe get past the to help us get back on track. And so I hope this was helpful. Uh, I do look forward to having, as I've said, but it still hasn't happened yet. I do hope to have my other son with me in a podcast um, very soon. We'll see what happens after that. We'll have other people that I interview. Um, I was wanting to do a shout out to a lot of my students, people to subscribe, uh, people that I, that I interact with. If you don't mind, and you want me to give a shout out to you or you or you, whoever you may be, put it in the comments. Say, yeah, Mark, give me a shout out. I'm so-and-so from uh, Brazil. I'm so-and-so from Saudi Arabia. I'm so-and-so from Italy. I have a list of names that I would like to make a shout out to. Feel free to follow me and share with your friends, share with your family. I want to help you and those you know speak English as a native, and to accomplish your goal as you go through this journey. Because I want to help you join the conversation. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. We hope you have a great day. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope this helps you to join the conversation.